All right, so we've been having this discussion on social media all morning, and now we're going to have it in the studios as well. It's still TV3 New Day. And yes, the Ghana Law School has been in the news, um, well, since yesterday, based on the results of uh, students that wrote the entrance exams for the bar, uh, Ghana Bar um, Association. And so interestingly, out of 1,820 candidates that wrote the exam, only 128 um, of them passed. And this has angered a lot of people. When we trace it back to April, there was also something similar like that when the results came out. More than 90% of the students failed out of 727 students that wrote the exam. And a lot of law students are complaining. Interestingly, not too many of them are willing to speak openly and that has been my main focus for some reason but we'll be discussing it into details this morning and joining me i have ni adokwe kujo he's a member coalition for legal education reform thank you for joining me thank you for having and me. also there's a man who actually uh filed a lawsuit was it against the ghana law school or the well, it, I was, it, it was against the general, the legal, general legal, legal council, council. Yes. okay so mr kenneth crunchy uh convener coalition for the reformation of legal education in Ghana. Good to have you both in the studios. Thank Thanks you. For what is us. the problem? Why has there been a mass failure um, you know, among students who wrote the exams? What's the reason? Well, um, let, me, let me start first. Let mm. me take it from a very interesting point okay. that you just made this morning. Yeah. That nobody seems to be ready to speak on record. Yeah. And, and it is not only with the students, it is also with even people in the profession. Mm. Because the General Legal Council operates from the point of fear. Okay. Okay. They, they have put a lot of fear into the practice. They, it is a body that needs to be feared. I think that what should have happened in this country is a, a, an atmosphere of comradeship mm. of old people seeking to groom and mentor and bring up new people. Yeah. What is happening in, the, in our country is that if you don't play by our rules, then you are not going to be part of the game at all. So, why? Uh, yes, why? That's a very beautiful question. Why? Yeah. So, because the General Legal Council is made up of the leadership of the Bar Association, mm. and then it is made up of the leadership of the judiciary, yeah. and the Attorney General is also there. Mm -hmm. So, and all these people are classmates. Mm -hmm. All these people are classmates. Yeah. They all went to the same school all of us have been to. Yeah. So, but they're, now they are in charge. So, if you don't play by their rules, you won't win cases in court. But why should it be so? Because the, the, what, I think that basically what has happened in our system is that cases are not being fought on merit. Mm. Cases are being fought on. So, if, for instance, if a junior guy goes to court, mm -hmm. the older guy is supposed to win. Even if he, he couldn't yes, defend yes, the case, yes, even yes, if the person... Yes, yes. So the, the system is that corrupt. So, and I'm not talking about corruption as in terms of money, corruption as in terms of ethics, in yeah. terms of practice, in terms of, of morality. Mm. So this is now leading to this system. It's led to the type of educational structure they have. If yeah. you don't play by the rules, you'll never be, be allowed to become a lawyer. Yesterday, I met a group of people, and we were talking about this thing. They said, if you want to become a lawyer, then please, can be quiet. No, but that's, that's an irony, because a lawyer is not supposed to be timid. No, no, yes. You see, so that is why, that is why your, your school, yeah. is where you attended secondary school, mm. if you heard that 93% of the people who sat for the regulatory examinations have failed, you immediately be organizing your colleague students from that particular school to go to the headmistress to find out yeah. why. Now, why is the legal profession in Ghana? Why is the Ghana Bar Association? Hmm. This thing has been taking place for years, more than five, six years now it's been going on. Why is the, why is the Ghana Bar Association? Because the president of the Ghana Bar Association is, the, is, a, is one of the problems that we have. Hmm. Wow. You see, so as far as I'm concerned, the 1,700 and so people that they are saying have failed, I would like to tell them they've not failed. Okay. Because you see, you see, the basic criteria for entry into professional law course is the LLB. Okay. And they have the LLB already. Mm. They have it already. They've achieved that. And my sister, <laughs> it is not, it's easy. not easy. It's not easy to achieve the LLB. Yeah. And and I can cite the LLB on my certificate, on my CV, yeah. that I have the LLB. Mm. If somebody will look at upon that and give me a job. 
nobody is going to look upon my passing the entrance examination and give me a job because you what is an entrance examination exactly but but you know in april when this happened i, I remember that the src uh marched to parliament and they petitioned the ghana legal council uh to take a look at the systemic problems affecting did that yield any results well before we talk about the april mm. it's important to say that going to parliament started somewhere mm. in December mm. um, 2017 mm -hmm. by the various law faculties. Yeah. Prior to that, the concerned LLB holders also went, went. there. And um, there is little to show for all that mm -hmm. engagement. Mm. Um, it's more or less, it always ends up more or less like a plea to general legal counsel. But with the greatest respect, what we have been taught is that the general legal counsel is not an independent constitutional body. Mm. In fact, the act, the act that establishes the legal profession, and for that matter, the general legal counsel, yeah. is very clear in section 1.5 that says that in their pe performance of their function, they shall comply with policy directions given to them by the minister mm -hmm. and here the attorney general. Unfortunately, the, in our case, the attorney general is also a member. Yeah. So, if you look at the issue, you, ju you just had a discussion with Beth and Beth. When there was an issue with names in terms of in, Beth and yeah. the minister instructed them to comply. A similar issue happened with DVLE. Mm -hmm. The minister instructed them to comply. Interestingly, as at last year, April, yeah. we had sent a petition to the Attorney General showing alternative to solving this problem. The Attorney General in real time responded and told us that your proposal is self-explanatory. It can be done. And I am forwarding it to the General Legal Council, okay. just as Cabinet has directed that this problem should be solved with immediate, uh, short-term and medium-term solution. Mm. We are a year past it. What were some of the you know, um, issues you came up with in terms of solutions to the problem? Straightforward solutions. We are saying that as long as the capacity at the Ghana School of Law is limited, mm -hmm. the entrance exams would only be a means to fill the limited space they will have. Yeah. And space should not be an issue mm -hmm. because we have over 15 law faculties. Yeah. When the entrance exam started, there were only four law faculties. Now, now we have fit. increased it to 15. So the issue of space shouldn't arise at all. Mm -hmm. Secondly, where we have various law firms in this country who are practicing, who have repute, space shouldn't be an issue. Mm. Be and, and therefore, space and human resource shouldn't be an issue because these law firms can mentor a new generation of um, yeah. uh, lawyers. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you can allow people to have private tuition and then within three years, they can attempt to pass the, mm. the exams. We had explained in our petition that if the General Legal Council is minded to, be, to exercise control as it wants to do, this becomes a means to even exercise greater control because now you'll be screening the products coming from the law faculties and there will be competition. Yeah. You'll be able to rank the performance of the various law faculties mm. and tell which ones are producing the best uh, law, law students. Yeah. The, the, those in practice too will be mentoring people and there will be... There will be what the constitution in article 25 promotes because yeah. education includes private participation education should have uh, facilities across the country mm -hmm. so if we are limiting it to just accra and we are limiting the space a space that has existed since the 60s and in 2019 we are still talking about space and we insist that space is the problem yeah. human resource is the problem then we are only suggesting that it is artificial if we don't look at this alternative. Okay, so the Chief Justice made um, some comments, um, and that also got a lot of people talking as well. Now, she mentioned something about quality and how there seems to be too many people wanting to become lawyers, and if they don't ensure that we get the quality um, that we need, then it will make it look like it's very easy for you to become a lawyer. Now, other people on social media also commented saying that, let's not mind the people who failed, because most of them are workers, or most of them did not study enough for the exam, and so if they fail, then it's their fault, and not uh, the fault of the Ghana Law School and the legal counsel as well. What do you make of these two statements? that people well, well, have made my my personal well. experience has been that the people who want to become lawyers are what i would say quote and unquote driven people yeah these are highly ambitious 
individuals, people who aspire to better conditions. And my very limited exposure at faculty mm. is that if you are not a, a very hard worker, you will not acquire your LLB. Every single person there who has been able to acquire the LLB is a hard worker. Mm. When I went to Makola, I never saw a single individual who was not a driven person. If somebody is able to work as a journalist, work as a medical doctor, you know, there are medical doctors who stop medicine coming to, they are architects, yeah. they are accountants, they are, these are already bankers, driven people yeah. in their various professions who want to also become lawyers. Now, I would have thought that every profession should welcome extra knowledge. You see, extra experience, yeah. yes. Because law is about life, okay? Law is about medicine. Law is about journalistic practice. Law is about land. So if you get a chief wanting to become a lawyer, you in the profession should welcome it. Mm -hmm. Where you have people who believe that, no, the opposite view should apply. We should rather be insular. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very sad. Okay. Now, now, you see, Cuba produces a lot of medical personnel yeah. and we in Ghana, Ghana import those medical yeah. are they are they of low quality are they yeah. of low quality Do you saying that because of the masses no if you were good at what you do you would not only produce more you would produce quality more mm. the the statement by the chief justice about mass production is a testament to how poor she is as an administrator of an educational system. Okay. You think that's what it is? That is what she admitted mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is what she admitted to. Now, it's, it is also, it's also a testament to the fact that she does not read the constitution of Ghana. Okay. Because it is all over the constitution of Ghana that people should be allowed to aspire to the best they can be. No, but she was saying that mm. as much as you, we are encouraging you to aspire, uh, we're still not going to open the way for anybody uh, at that, all. That's, that's what I'm saying. That because, because, you see, the first thing we should all be is to aspire to be constitutional. Mm -hmm. In her role as a public official, her first guiding principle should be the constitution. Okay. Uh -huh. And if the constitution of Ghana says that if you want to become educated, then when you, when, if you have the brains and you have the money to pay your way, then of course you should be allowed to get to wherever you mm. want to be. Now she's saying no, we won't produce mass lawyers. And her reason for that is not because of academic qualification. Yeah. Her reason for that is because from her experience on the General Legal Council, people do not behave ethically morally when they become lawyers. lawyers so there's yeah. a need to somehow keep down mm -hmm. the prune, mm -hmm. keep down the numbers of lawyers. Now I'm saying, I'm sitting here, I'm saying that the lawyers that she hires, you see, yeah. the general legal counsel hires, they are some of the most unethical people you can find in the practice of law. Okay. I can prove it. You can prove it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I've met them in their practice in their law course, mm -hmm. and they are not ethical lawyers. What, what exactly is it about them that... Okay, there is a case called Awuni v. Wyke, mm -hmm. where the Supreme Court established the principle to do with education. The lawyer who represented Wyke mm -hmm. is the lawyer for the General Legal Council. And then the General Legal Council conducted itself in a certain way. Ethically, mm -hmm. he had the duty to advise the General Legal Council that this thing that you are doing, I will, I, why he did it and we took it to court and lost. So don't conduct yourself yeah. in that manner. He failed to do so. So they took a second case. Professor Stephen Kokwa, sorry, you know of him, Professor Azar. Mm -hmm. They took, yeah. yes, they took and that. And he also case. has been speaking a lot about this. 2017. Issue, yeah. And the Supreme Court prescribed the Independent Examination Committee and then prescribed this, this very examination yeah. we are talking about, entrance examination. This same lawyer mm -hmm. is still defending the General Legal Council, and I have me, I have sued on these same matters. Ethically, this lawyer has a duty to inform them that these things that you are doing flies in the face of the law. Yeah. That is why they teach us in the law school. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when it comes to practice, it's totally different. So the least Chief Justice talking about people not behaving ethically, and then turning around to hide the most. Yeah.
on <laughs> the <laughs> allegations. Chief, okay. Let me tell you a word on this. What the Chief Justice said, mm -hmm. with the greatest respect, is for want of a better expression, a collection of prejudice okay. that is informing her decision. With the greatest respect. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying this? She has been on the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council for a long time. Yeah. And I say this with a lot of respect. It's the, you can compare it to, excuse me to say, a lady suffering a number of broken hearts through dating. Mm -hmm. And when she gets to her 30, says that, look, I'm not going to date anymore. Mm -hmm. They are all the same. All men are the same. It's a similar situation. Because of the exposure to the infractions um, by lawyers already in the system, yeah. which they have dealt with at the disciplinary committee, the perception has now become, look, if we open the floodgates, this is what will happen. But respectfully, there are safeguards that can be put in place yeah. easily. Mm -hmm. And her comment clearly suggests that as a result of lack of engagement, they are of the opinion that the only solution to the problem is to shut the door. Yeah. But respectfully, South Africa had a similar problem like this, and they solved it. How did they do it? They created uh, the Legal Practice Act, which allows the law faculties to do both courses. Okay. And the second ap approach was there is a bond that is there. Mm -hmm. So if you have any lawyer that practices and out as a result of their negligence or their unethical uh, practice, you suffer any loss, yeah. you are compensated out of that bond. Okay. So if we should study other jurisdictions, we will find out that maybe what we are going through is not new. Mm -hmm. And we can pick and choose solutions from there to solve our own problem. Okay. Because law is a vocation. Every Ghanaian has the right, if they want to aspire, like my brother said, mm. to be lawyers, to have access to that education. Yeah. If they choose to do that, they must meet all the, the requirements. The comments that have been on social media, that those that fail, uh, they are all, for me, excuse me to say, begging the question. Yeah. Because if you know the typical life of a law student, mm -hmm. you know that they are deprived of social life, where others are having fun. Mm -hmm. Law is like a jealous wife. But it's a sacrifice you make Yes, for. so when you have made all these sacrifices, devoted a lot of your time to go through all these courses and you are told that you have failed. But making a sacrifice doesn't guarantee an automatic, um, you know... There are two um, different things. If you are what failed, you are saying... If you are failed on merit, if yeah. you are failed on merit, then it's okay. Yes. okay. But, what but, but when you have a system, you see, that fills 93% of applicants. And with all due respect to the faculties, the faculties who produce these candidates, yeah. I think that they should just stop producing them. Okay. You think so? Yes, yes, yes. Stop producing or limit? No, stop producing. We should stop. Or, stop or we should boycott law faculties. They should is no. that, Do you think yeah, that's yeah, a they, solution? They, they, they should right? stop because that is they the should, message. They, they should stop producing them. But they are not fit and for then, purpose. And then sit down with the General Legal Council and the Independent Examination Committee mm. and then ask them, what exactly do you want to go into the teaching of the LLB? Yeah. Because it cannot be the case. If it is the case that what we are teaching at faculty is wrong, then because you see, I paid ten thousand five hundred dollars as fees at faculty to acquire the LLB wow. to earn the LLB ten thousand five hundred dollars United States dollars to to earn the LLB here in Ghana. Here in Ghana. Now I can buy about three Uber cars. Hmm. Now, now the, a lot of students who have failed been f declared as failed today also paid similar fees or higher. I am saying here, without a shred of doubt, that they have an actionable case at law against their faculties. Wow. Because the faculties have the duty to ensure that they are working in sync with the Ghana School of Law and the IEC and the General Legal Council, so that the curriculum is what is taught. Mm. It's what is taught at faculty. Now, if what they teach you at faculty is not enough, it's not good enough to qualify you to be a professional lawyer. Then you have been taught the wrong thing. Somebody has taken your money and fed, and you, with exactly. and fed you with trash. Who? And again, time <laughs> is not on our side. And so I'm going to have to cut this conversation. I hope we can do this again. Because so there's too. still a lot more to discuss. So Allegations too. of who you know, <laughs> you know, in the law school, in the medical school. It seems to be the, um, you know, the, the conversation right now. We and need so the media to sustain this conversation. We need the media to sustain this conversation. We'll try our possible best to bring this back. Uh, but thank you so
to Mr. Kenneth Crunchy, Convener Coalition for the Reformation of Legal Education in Ghana, and also Ni Adokwe Kojo, Member Coalition for Legal Education Reform. Thank you so much.